The idea for uh, this expansion project came about when, really when we were doing the last one together. We did one in Seattle, and uh, this is something they didn't really cover yet. Most of the libraries are genre-based, and this one's not. This isn't about a particular kind of music. It's more about great-sounding drums and not trying to force them into some sort of style. And the unifying thread in all of these drums is that they're, they're handcrafted by a small number, sometimes just one person. Uh, these are drums that you don't see in every music store. They're rare, and each one of these uh, is a unique handcrafted instrument at the highest level of attention to detail and quality. When we were trying to figure out where we should do this, we needed a, uh, a live room that was big enough to get some air around the drums, but not so big that we'd have to damp things down. Uh, we're not trying to get some cavernous rock sound, we're just trying to get the sound of great drums. Uh, what we did is we sort of baffled off the drums closely, and then the, the room mics were a little further away, so if you want to listen to the drums with just the, the close mics and the overheads, It'll sound tight, and then you can add the room mics as you wish and make it sound, you know, like a much bigger kind of ambient sound. Yeah, Joe, Joe Blaney. Uh, Joe's experience is deep. Uh, you know, a lot of times if you get a little ping or something on the snare drum, uh, the first thing an engineer asks you to do is clamp it down and, and muffle the drum, and then it doesn't have any life. Uh, if we had ping on the snare drum, Joe would hear it in the control room, come out, move a mic just a little bit, and uh, suddenly the ping was gone in the control room. Uh, the ping that was in the snare drum is what gave it all the life and the energy and the, the brightness in the air. If you start damping it down, you end up with a really thuddy, generic sounding drum. So it's that kind of experience that really was invaluable on this, this project. Uh, I've always had a reputation as an engineer for getting good drum sounds and things. I've worked on a lot of records with the uh I started my career with The Clash. I recorded the Combat Rock album in the 80s. I worked with uh, Prince and Keith Richards and the Ramones. And I made a record with Jack Bruce where I got to record uh, Ginger Baker and Tony Williams. I've, I've worked with a lot of good drummers over the years, both session drummers and in bands. And it's sort of my area of expertise re recording live drums. The thing I like about working with Joe and the thing I like about his whole discography, which is pretty deep, is he, he listens to the music and makes it sound the way the music should sound as opposed to having his sound and imposing it upon the music. And so with this setup where the drums were going to be very broad in character, I knew that he would be able to capture what the drums were supposed to sound like instead of just, you know, taking one approach and making it sound one way more generic. He was able to really bring out the character in each, in each kit. We got to record a bunch of great drums this week, and uh, each kit sounds infinitely usable. That's the great thing, is when you hear these drums playing back at you, you, you definitely can hear them in a, sitting perfectly in a track. I'm very impressed with this product uh, because it's the, the nature of it, the way it's thought out, and you know the way it ends up sounding is very natural. What you're getting here is really uh, a great representation of some truly high quality instruments. <laughs> 